Hello, this is Manesh Patel from IchimukaTrade.com. This is our weekly Ichimuka analysis where we cover all the global markets from uh, North, Amer uh, North and South America to Europe to Asia and so forth. Okay, this is a normal disclaimer. This is for education and use only. Today we're going to be using charts from both uh, Thinkorswim from TD Ameritrade and also eSignal2. Here are my contact details here, info at eiicapital.com. If you go to ichimukutrade.com, you can access any of our free videos on Ichimuku and other things. Also, you can access any of our multiple time frame signals and heat box services there, too. Okay. We're going to quickly go over to our heat map. And we're going to look at the global markets from the heat map perspective first. So we got most of all the world exchanges here. And I'm just going to put it here. So if you scroll down here, you're going to see all the different world exchanges here. Uh, mainly what we're looking for are trends on both the daily and weekly, which is a multiple time frame signal. So we're going to look for them to be the same color. And then what you want to do is you want to make sure the letters are in black and no other colors. Because if they're in different colors, that means they're overextended and price is too far away. Uh, and uh, you're at a pretty much overextension wherever it's either overbought or oversold too much. Okay? So you're not looking for that at all. And then what you're looking for is on the daily time frame, you're looking for a 2 and a 4 number. And on the weekly, you're looking for a 2, 4, or 5, whichever one. So if you look here... U.S. futures right now for both the Dow and the NASDAQ, uh, sorry, S&P and uh, Dow are basically trending as far as two time frame buys. The NASDAQ is it right now because it's a weekly kind of not in a good state at all. We'll go look at that in a couple of minutes. Uh, Canada is not set. Five basically means it's ready trending, so you kind of missed the boat a little. Uh, it, you will have an opportunity if it consolidates, but right now you're kind of looking for things that are just starting to trend because that's where the biggest re, uh, reward risk ratio is going to be the, the really good one. Uh, so if you just scroll down, there's a four here as far as Spain is concerned, but the weekly is not set up at all. If you just keep on scrolling down right now, there's Abu Dhabi had a potential, but it doesn't have the higher time frame in sync. Uh, so if you look at Tokyo, Tokyo market is bearish right now, trending. So that looks like a potential opportunity for a bearish trend, and so does Japan. So we'll definitely look at those two uh, in just a couple of minutes. Um, and then if you scroll down, there's no two time frame opportunities at all as far as dailies and weeklies are concerned. There are some opportunities kind of like on the edge, but not quite there at all. Uh, outside uh, the US futures. So let's go through and let's go look at the charts now. What we're going to do is we're going to start looking at the global markets for eSignal first. Uh, this gives you a very good picture of all the global markets. So uh, this is where we're going to start here. If you look here, uh, basically the left hand side is going to be the daily time frame, right hand side is going to be the weekly. And what we're going to do is we're going to first start off in Europe uh, because that's probably the best one to start off with. And let me just shrink this down some more. I can't, I can't. Okay, so let's go start off in Germany. That's typically being the leading one moving forward. Now, if you look at Germany, we are starting to be bullish trending as far as the daily and the weekly is concerned. Uh, daily is starting to pop out now. If you look at the weekly, what it's doing is trying to get to this resistance level up here, which is around 71,539,31. So around 71,000, oh, sorry. Yeah, around 71, 7, uh, this level right there uh, is 71, 52, 16 is where it's trying to get to. So it's trying to get there. So it can sit there and start a bullish trend to get to that level. Once it gets that resistance level, it's going to be interesting to see what happens. However, be very, very careful. The reason why the Ichimoku indicators on this do not look good at all. The weekly is telling me that this thing needs a pullback sooner or later. Whether you get there or get to this level or not, it definitely needs a major pullback as far as the weekly is concerned. When that happens, we don't know, but it definitely needs a pullback moving forward. Okay? Uh, France. If you look at France, this is starting to pop out here. But if you look here, we're at a major resistance level right here, which is at 3429. Uh, and you can see it's been going in the clouds. So as far as the weekly is concerned, the trend is not bullish at all, no matter how much of a push here you've got. Uh, so it does have a potential bouncing off that major resistance level now. And it's starting to go down here. 
And if you look just here, we are basically starting a big consolidation pattern here, uh, but only time's going to tell exactly what's going to happen here. But this does not. Look, this looks like it's bullish, but the weekly is telling us it's basically going to run into a issue in just a moment. Okay. Uh, UK. Uh, I don't have the charts for UK today, unfortunately. But if you look at the UK symbol here, right there you can see basically zero and zero that means it's really not doing anything as far as daily and weekly is concerned so definitely nothing there at all okay uh, let's go to Amsterdam if you look at Amsterdam here this is bullish trending here again just like Germany this thing's gonna sit there and get to its major resistance level of 336.21 and at that point it's gonna sit there and need to do a pullback so I definitely look for it to get to about 336 and at that point look for a pullback to see exactly what's gonna happen the daily looks like it's starting to start a bullish trend but you know from the weekly that basically profits are gonna be very limited moving forward Spain you can see here it came out of the clouds, sentiment starting bullish, but you can see here you kind of stuck between two different worlds right now where you have a support roughly which is around 6596 and a resistance level which is basically 7475. So those are two levels right now that you're looking at uh, where Spain's kind of stuck at. My guess is it's going to sit there and probably get to about 7200 and may stop full short of that major resistance level and then may sit there and try to reverse but who knows. Italy, same thing as Spain. It's got a major resistance level right around 15,000. Major support level is going to be roughly right about here, which is 13,395. It's a major support level moving forward. Nordic, Norway. You can see a bullish trend here on the daily. You can see here it's at its major resistance level right now. So it's going to be interesting what happens here. It definitely needs a pullback here. So I definitely wouldn't sit there and bet on the Nordic Norway right now at all until we get a pullback. Oslo, if you look here, really doing nothing at all, getting to its major resistance level. Notice this is the same story we're kind of talking about in all the major European countries right now. We're getting to a major resistance level as far as the weekly is concerned. Here's one that's a little different, Switzerland. Remember we've been talking about in our weekly videos how Switzerland's being bullish while the market, other markets were being bearish? Well, you can see that the major trend has sit there occurred, and you can see that with that, with when all the markets, other markets were down, this one was still moving up. And you could see from here, when it got to its resistance level, since the other markets now moved up, this broke its resistance level. So this thing is starting a trend both on the daily and weekly. Uh, I wouldn't get caught up in this. We kind of need a minor pullback on this one to occur. And once the minor pullback occurs, it can resume its trend moving forward. Russia. You can see Russia really not doing anything at all. Major resistance is going to be 1475 moving forward. Major support is going to be 1300 uh, long term. Israel, we don't have access to today, unfortunately. Uh, Turkey, remember Turkey, Israel, sorry, Turkey, Switzerland, and Malaysia were the ones that we've been saying were being bullish as far as the world markets are concerned. And you could see that they have sat there and continued to go up and they've retested their, uh, their major resistance levels and broken higher. So Turkey is sitting there doing exactly what the multiple time frame signals that we sent out uh, earlier was doing along with uh, Switzerland. Okay. South Africa, really nothing going on. You have a gap here, but you're just basically gapping to the top of the resistance range as far as weekly is concerned. Right about now, you should be basically breaking the resistance level on the weekly time frame. If you are, then you're, it's look good, looks good for you to be bullish for that particular country. If not, I definitely would be sitting there playing it bullish at all. Okay, so let's go over to Middle East now. Here's Saudi Arabia. Here. And if you look at Saudi Arabia here, it's basically movement up, but we're basically in the clouds, so really nothing going on right now. And you could see from this downward movement, we had a huge, huge downtrend, which is not good for the Saudi market at all. We held a major support here. Uh, now we look like we're going for this cloud. Uh, we're at a minor resistance level right now. 7100 is going to be a major resistance level for the Saudi market moving forward. Dubai market, you could see here, popped itself out of the cloud right now. Really means nothing at all. We got to see it basically break 
that 1580 level with conviction. If it does, then it has the ability to sit there and trend higher to about 1620, where it's going to meet the next resistance level, and then have the potential, if it breaks there, to go up to about 1740 or so moving forward. Abu Dhabi, nothing really going on here. Push up here, basically a huge push. Went to resistance, kind of failed so far. Uh, it's really got to break the 25-20 uh, level in order to start a trend to the top side. If not, the support level is going to be 24-80 moving forward. Okay, that's it for the Middle East. So let's go over to Asia. This is we're going to cover Australia first. If you look at Australia, we had basically a bullish breakout right now. However, it really hasn't broken out at all. It's got to break 4,300 moving forward. If it does, it does have a potential starting a trend. Uh, believe it? Well, not really. Not, it's going to actually get to the top of the range here at 4,400. So it'll move about 100 points more until it gets to the top of the range, and that's about it. It's got to sit there and break 45, 4,450 in order to start a trend to the top side. Hong Kong. And it looks like a pop out of the cloud here. The sentiment's bullish. However, if you look here, this really is not going anywhere because 20,301 is a major resistance level moving uh, that it's going to run into as far as the weekly is concerned. Korea. Korea here is at the top of the cloud, which is at a major resistance level here. Nothing really going on in Korea at all. It had a chance to sit there and tank. It didn't do that at all. It had a chance to be bullish here. It never really did that at all. So this thing's just going sideways. So nothing really going on as far as Korea is concerned. Japan, if you look here, does have a potential of tanking. It's going in the sideways action here. However, if it could break its support level here at about 8,200, uh, then we do have a potential of going down. We saw that from the heat map in a minute ago. I think the Tokyo and uh, uh, yeah, Tokyo and I think Hong Kong was the other one too. I can't remember. We could go back in a minute. It wasn't Hong Kong. It was Tokyo and Japan the Nikkei and the TSX were the two that basically have the potential of going down lower and you can see why because they're at the bottom of their top range if they actually break this one, 82.33, if it breaks this one it does have the ability to go lower uh, even more. Okay, China if you look at China here we're at a uh, major support level right now, which is basically right here at 22.27. Uh, we're kind of hanging around there right now. If it breaks that with vengeance, then this thing does have the ability to keep on going lower. You can see from the daily time frame, this has been a nice trend downwards uh, and then can continue to go downwards because the momentum on the weekly is still very, very strong bearish uh, moving forward. So be very careful of trying to bet on China going uh, bullish. Tokyo, which is the one we just covered a minute ago, uh, does have a potential of breaking down the bearish side. It's at the bottom, getting close to the bottom of its consolidation range at 693 moving forward. Uh, India Nifty, really nothing going on right now. Uh, this is sediment is bullish as far as daily is concerned, but really hasn't broken above its resistance level of 5360 moving forward. And you can see from the weekly, it's getting uglier and uglier as this thing coils in. Sensex, same thing, not really anything there at all. Singapore, we can't access today, but we will in the future. And if you look at the Malaysia market, excuse me, just like we've been talking about the last couple of weeks, Turkey, uh, Switzerland, and Malaysia have been very strong. You can see that from this weekly chart here. Uh, this is continuing to move strong forward and we're moving forward. So Malaysia, uh, Turkey, and uh, Switzerland would be the three countries in the world that are pretty much being the very strongest, even stronger than the U.S., believe it or not, in moving forward. So definitely keep an eye on them and see how far they keep on going. Let's go move to North, uh, to U.S. and North America. Uh, let's go start from South America and kind of work our way up. Santiago, Chile. Here's Santiago, Chile. You can see a bearish trend here as far as the daily is concerned. Uh, but if you look here on the, the weekly, it's really doing nothing. Just got to the bottom of the range, which is a major support right here at 4160. And we'll probably bounce off there. Major resistance is going to be 4100. This thing looks ugly. There's really nothing there as far as Santiago, Chile is concerned. No trends at all. So there's nothing really to talk about there. Let's go to Argentina. Argentina. 
you have conflict because you have a bearish setup here and a bullish setup as far as the daily is concerned. So that you really got a major, major conflict going on right now. Uh, believe it or not, this thing's not going to sit there and start to move up unless it could break 2600. If it could break 2600, then you do have a chance of sitting there going up to 2900 and engaging in maybe the weekly going into a bullish state for once, but you got to sit there and break the 2600 level in order for this thing to even have any opportunities to go higher. Brazil, nothing really going on as far as Brazil is concerned. Major resistance level is going to be right about here, which is about 60,900. Major support level is going to be right around 55,000 for Brazil, but nothing really going on right now. It's in counter trend mode. We're stuck between 55,000 and major resistance level, which is basically 61,000. Colombia, nothing really going on at all. It's at a major, major resistance level right now. If it holds there and then starts to tank and goes below 13,000, this thing does have a potential of tanking lower and does have a potential of going down another 1,000 points to about 12,000. So definitely watch out for Colombia moving forward. Canada, as you can see here, it's had a chance to break down. It really hasn't right now. So now it's kind of stuck between two two different levels. It's stuck between 11,200 11, and a resistance of 12,000 moving forward. So it's really got to make up its mind which way it wants to go. For the futures, let's go over here to the futures over here and think or swim. We'll look here. NASDAQ here, basically in the daily time frame, you can see it's broken out really hasn't done anything is trying to get to the top of the range here so it's trying to do that there so nothing really there on the NASDAQ a mini S&P 500 futures again this is trying to get to the top of the range as far as the weekly is concerned and if you look at the Dow futures same thing we're trying to get to the top of the range it seems like on all the markets are going to get to the top of the range uh, probably by the end of this month and then at that point it's going to be key decision time what's going to happen because majority of the global markets around the world except for Turkey, Israel and Malaysia well, we're just getting to the top of the resistance as far as the weekly time frame is concerned and then uh, we haven't really broken it except for those three countries I talked about so it's going to be interesting to see what happens at the end of this month moving into this month and maybe into the first week into September going forward uh, but only time is going to tell and we can see exactly what's going to happen if you have any questions, uh, feel free to contact us here. Uh, keep an eye out on our messages on Twitter, uh, which also goes to Facebook and YouTube uh, in regards to support levels, trade opportunities, and so forth there too. Thank you and have a good day.